Hey y'all, Sherry G. Welcome to the channel. So look, y'all, we've been introduced to the Fletchers um, a while ago. They've been like friends of the show, Love and Marriage Huntsville. But this season, or this half of this season, they have come on pretty strong. And I'm here to say I like it. I'm all for the Fletchers and what they bring to the show. I feel that most people believe the Fletchers are are I guess you could say a breath of fresh air and in my opinion they brought more interest to love and marriage Huntsville and also in my opinion uh, they kind of saved the show if you ask me as far as it comes to couples on the show anyway I mean with the Fletchers uh, I'd say they brought more truth and transparency to the screen of any of the couples on the show at present outside of Martell and Melody. They've opened up the doors to their lives and in just a very, very short time, we know more about them on a real and very relatable level than the majority of the other castmates. And all the, um, you know, with them and all of their fallacies and bull crap, they've been trying to sell us for the, uh, what, the entire six long seasons. From the Fletchers, we get a couple who had been together for years, overcome trials and tribulations concerning their marriage, and who are currently working through the struggles dealing with their family dynamics as it pertains to their four children and a niece. So I've given my views and opinions on the situation um, as far as it pertains to the children in my last video. So I'm not going to be adding to that in this video except to say they did mention that they're considering counseling to help the family get through their struggle and I actually hope they, they do. I hope they go forward with it because for a lot of black families that's just like <laughs> not a thing like it's really hard to get african-american families to go to counseling you know as a family as individuals much less a family and in particular there's an even harder struggle as it pertains to the african-american male so i mentioned in my last video that i thought that they could probably benefit from counseling and it looks like it is something that they're considering. So I hope they go ahead and go through it so that they could work through, you know, their current struggles. But in this video, I actually want to focus on the interview the Fletchers had with Carlos King after the episode aired. It was a great interview and we got to find out so much more about the Fletchers. So let me go ahead, drop my disclaimer and, you know, do all that jazz. When I come back, I will give my commentary and keep in mind that it's just my views, my opinions, my way of seeing things. Um, so everything is of opinion and it's all alleged. Could be true, might not be true. I'll be back. Hang tight. <music> Okay, y'all, I'm back. So in this interview with Carlos King, they discussed infidelity in their marriage. Carlos actually asked Chris to share why he did it to help the wives out there understand why husbands cheat. <laughs> oh, y'all, let me say, I was looking sideways at Carlos because I'm like, in my mind, like, men and women cheat for varying reasons. There's like... No one size fits all here. I mean, <laughs> the choice to walk away from a situation or not partake is always a viable and the best option, if you ask me. But like I said, there's no one size fits all. Anyone experiencing this or who has experienced this 
would have to examine their individual situation to get to the underlying cause. So I don't know where Carlos was going with that, but yeah. Anyway, Fletch did say that he couldn't speak for all men, but in his case, it was peer pressure coupled with being immature, not looking past the moment, you know, not considering the big picture or the consequences if he did go ahead and partake if you will. So y'all, you know, Nell, she had to give, you know, her version of the situation and she doesn't hold back, you know, her choice of words are colorful. And I even heard some women like complaining about the way she talks, but Hey, I'm not here to judge Nell for being Nell. As a matter of fact, I appreciate a person who can be themselves really. And, um, I know that You know, some people say there's a time and place for everything. I feel like this interview was the perfect time to just show up and be who you are and not fake the funk, right? Um, I feel like even at the, the dinner table with the children, that was the perfect time to be who they all were and not fake the funk. And this is one of the things or the major reason why the, um, viewers, are attracted to this family and want to know more about them and are happy that the Fletchers are here. So anyway, Nell went on to state that a woman could do all sorts of sexual acts for her husband, you know, that things that he finds pleasing, fellatio, et cetera, et cetera. And if he wants to, he can still step out. Like those things aren't going to just prevent him from stepping out if that's what he really wants to do. And she actually used her situation as well as Melody and Martell's as examples. In her opinion, she stated that the other woman just wanted the wife's spot. Again, I feel like there's no one size fits all, right? Um, Who knows what the other woman wants unless you know the other woman. Like I've met women before who actually said they prefer dating married men because of the benefits, because there is no attachment and the man would do things like buy stuff for them, et cetera, et cetera. So of course these women don't really have an emotional attachment to the man. Um, Mel's case, Nell's case. Yeah. Things apparently were a little bit different, but again, no one size fits all. This is just her, you know, she was telling her side of the story and how she felt based on her experience. Um, one thing for sure, the situation, it, it took a toll on now. She spoke of being depressed, stressed. Um, she said she was hardly able to get out of bed and she was losing a lot of weight. And the one thing she said was that she was wondering like, what was wrong with her? What did she do to deserve this? And, um, I'm sure that that's a question. A lot of people who go through this type of thing, both men and women, ask themselves. They probably sit around and wonder, you know, what's wrong with me? Like, what am I doing wrong? What am I not doing? Et cetera, et cetera. Like examining themselves and figuring that the problems with them, when in all actuality, it doesn't have anything to do with them. Um, So we find out in the interview that she and Fletcher, they actually separated for two years. And then Carlos he actually um, had her expound on it. Like, were you in the same house or did you separate and live in two different homes? And she stated that they actually lived in two different homes. And, you know, this experience hurt not only she, and of course, probably Chris too, but um, it took a toll on the children, right? So um, it it caused um, division in their family. So everyone was affected in a negative way. And when you look at the interview, you could actually see the situation going back, revisiting that time, revisiting those emotions. You could see Nell starting to well up like she was going to cry and she was forcing tears back. But yeah, you could you could feel her pain at that time and um, the emotions. And, you know, Carlos actually mentioned that he could tell that it was emotional and she said it's okay. I really appreciate the fact that this couple was um, willing to take us back there and to travel back and experience 
that time with us as viewers to be transparent enough to share it with us. Um, they gave a lot of advice, you know, um, for, well, not a lot of advice, but there was a lot that you could take away from this interview. Um, and this is what the viewers, this is what the viewers appreciate about this couple. The fact that they've shared themselves, the good, the bad, and the ugly in such a short time. You know, in my opinion, they've actually managed to push the other couples down the ranks, if you will, and they become viewer favorites. They also shared how they met one another. And I love to hear how couples, you know, come together, how they meet, like what drew them to one another, especially when they've been married for such a long time. So, of course, she said they met at a club and I wasn't surprised to hear that because they have already shared their love for dancing. You know, they took us on a date night when they were dancing and, you know, she's Nell stated that they both loved music and they both loved to dance and that dance was actually her love language. So I wasn't surprised they met at a club, but what was interesting was that on the night they met, neither one of them really wanted to go out that night. So Fletcher said that, you know, he, he wasn't feeling it. He didn't really want to go out, but his friend, one of his friends actually convinced him to go ahead and go out. So he conceded. And it was the same exact thing for Nell. She wasn't feeling it either. She didn't want to go out, you know, and her girlfriend convinced her. And so she finally conceded. So anyway, Nell goes on to say that, you know, when she got to the club, she was sitting at a table with her girls. And when Fletch walked in, she noticed him right away and that their eyes met. Can y'all imagine? <laughs> I really enjoyed hearing this. Honestly, I really did. Um, so she said that their eyes met and that um, he ordered drinks for the table and had him sent over to the ladies. And then he walked over and asked Mel to Nell, sorry, to dance. And that, that was all she wrote. Oh, and Nell, she actually mentioned that um, she knew that he was going to be her husband. Y'all talking about fate. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I Did I say it already? Well, I'm going to say it again. I enjoyed hearing that about them, how they met. They talked about the time Fletch met up at Marceau. Uh, with Marceau in Atlanta too, y'all. Yeah, that came out in this interview. You know, when he ended up, you know, it was that whole thing about his picture, his back being in a picture. Well, yeah, they talked about that. They talked about the back picture. Let me just say that Marceau is looking like a black Pinocchio right now. <laughs> well, actually, we already know that, right? We already know that uh, there was more to the story than he was telling. But just in this particular interview with Carlos, it was the fact that not only was Fletch saying that he had only spent about two and a half hours with Marceau, <laughs> Nell actually confirmed it. <laughs> so anyway, Carlos, he went on to ask Nell how she felt about Tisha. And he also asked how they felt about the Scots in general. And they mentioned that they really don't know them. Nell went on to state that the only real conversation she's actually had with Tisha was at dinner when Tisha asked if they'd experienced any infidelity in their marriage. And she told Carlos, you know, that uh, Marceau shut that conversation down real quick and changed the narrative. And if you all remember the episode, you know, that's exactly what he did. He shut that conversation down. He wasn't about to go there. He didn't want Tisha to go there. Because in my opinion, he didn't want his stuff to be put out. She mentioned that, uh, you know, she mentioned to Carlos, she had also mentioned the same thing in the um, clip, but she mentioned to Carlos again that she felt like Tisha was reaching out for help. And she also stated that she feels like Marceau, you know, if they were to try to garner a, a relationship, he wasn't, he wouldn't have it. He would want interference because he really doesn't want Tisha to be friends with a strong woman like her. I concur. Y'all, this interview, it was good. And I'm so glad the Fletchers are here because they truly outshine, in my opinion, the other couples. I mean, if we look at the Scots 1.0, 
I feel like they can't hold a lead on this show. They've tried it. It seems like production has tried to put them in like the lead to be that it couple. But the lack of transparency, lack of business acumen, and everything that is being revealed outside of the show to me is a major hindrance when it comes to the Scots 1.0. And to me, Scots 2.0 are just boring. I've seen tons of comments from people saying that they don't miss seeing the Scots either. And y'all know we haven't seen them for the last two episodes. I actually feel the same way, y'all. Didn't miss them and the shows were pretty good without them. Now then you have Stormy and Courtney. Um, uh, um, They really aren't giving it either, y'all. I feel like they give more fallacy than truth. And I'll talk about that in another video. Now, then there's the Whitlows, right? Well, looks like they're actually considering leaving. And rumor has it that that's exactly what's going to happen, that they're going to leave. In my opinion, they should, because Tiffany is too much of a Karen who is leaning heavily on smearing Kiki's reputation. And she's not invested enough to care enough to be transparent about her own life. And Lou... Well, he hasn't been there uh, for the most part. Lou's been playing the part of the invisible man. So anyway, y'all go ahead over to Carlos King's channel. If you haven't, check out his interview with the Fletchers. You won't regret it. It was a great interview. That is all I have for you in this video. So please like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell because I'll be back until then. Ciao. Ha, how you like that?